Hey, folks, Dave back in Studio B. And you know when I got my SEAL shirt on, it's going to be something uh, really, uh, really cool and really, uh, really important tonight. <laughs> this is what I should say. Uh, so, yeah, so we're going to take a look, excuse me, at, um, at Stone Cold Hockey PC tonight. Yes, Ron is just finishing up on his channel. He's over on uh, Twitch doing his there. That is going to set up my uh, chat here, make sure everything's okay. Uh, Ron's just finishing up over there on Twitch right now. I think his game just went to overtime. He's showing it off, too. So I'm going to be showing this off here on YouTube. Uh, let me just make sure that everything's okay, and I can have the uh, try to get out the bad people in the chat. You know what I mean? So I just, I just have to do this manually sometimes, and then we'll get right down to the gameplay. This game, it has taken so many... I don't want to say twists and turns. It's just it's it's had so many changes since uh, Ron and I um, jumped in on this game and and helped out. Uh, we couldn't really talk about it, so uh, now we can. <laughs> uh, and there was some things that I pretty much insisted on. I did. There were some things that I said no. Uh, I I I insist on this, and we we have to have this. As uh, Robbie jumps in, hi Robbie. And, um, and they pretty much accommodated all the things that we asked for. So I'm going to show you a little bit tonight of what it does right now. It's still a couple weeks away. I think we're looking at Halloween night, so two weeks from tonight, that you should be able to play this game or, or buy this game, I should say. And so let me show you a little bit about it. All right, so let me get down to the game. And hopefully that is going to bring us to the Stone Cold Hockey screen. So what I've done is I've installed all the seasons that are available with it right now. Okay, and they are basically all the seasons that you can get with the cards and dice version of the game. So you get 64, 74, 83, 90, 2005, 2011, and 2021. So those are the seasons that you get. So when you buy them, you know, if you want to buy them all, you can buy them all, but this is where they're going to be. Now from here, you can do a couple of things. You can just click on a season and start playing it, okay? Or you can go and create a new season, so you can pick teams from any season that you own and drop them into your new season, okay? You can also do a playoffs. And you can set up a couple of options here for playoffs with a split bracket, seeded teams, blah, 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 blah. You can read all the things that you need to do here. So let's just say you wanted to do 74, 75. You wanted to play the finals again. So, okay, I want to play the uh, Flyers and the Sabres, right? So we're going to go uh, 74, 75. Finals. I'm going to call it that. I'm going to create the playoffs. And, yep, seven-game series. Boom. All right, so now I go to the playoffs, and here we are. It's Buffalo and Philadelphia, and I can auto-play the games, or I can play the games. I can even auto-play the round, and we'll find out that Philadelphia won 4-1. to In fact, most of my uh, simulations of this, Philadelphia's won 4-3, to 4-1 to the whole bit. Um, so Philadelphia tends to do pretty well in this. So we can go back to our summary. We can get uh, some of the goal leaders, the goaltending leaders. We can check on, again, the bracket here. The bracket is all the way to the right because it's uh, Philadelphia and, and Buffalo in the finals. We can click on our team to see how they did. Click on Buffalo, how they did. And we can check the highlights of the best wins, the worst defeats, and memorable games. I'll talk about memorable games in one second when we get back to the main screen. Now, from here... You can say, I want to play it again. So reset, and bam. Now we're going to reset it, and let's auto-play the round, and boom. Buffalo wins this time. Wow, for the first time, Buffalo actually wins. So, again, you can go and reset it and play this till your heart's content. So let's back out of that, and you can see that it created my 74-75 finals. If I right-click on that, I can delete that, and that's out of here. So let's show you... Uh, some season mode here. So, again, so you can go create a new season, create a new playoffs, whatever you need to do here from the start. So I'm going to go to 74, 75, okay? And you start off on your summary screen. And there's been no games played, so it's kind of blank. And then you can go to your schedule, and then here's your schedule. Now, this is really nice. Now, the logos you do have to put in yourself, but as you can see, I put in all the uh, the classic logos in into the uh, the folder. It was real easy. So you might have some better logos than I do, <laughs> you know. But uh, I put in the ones that I wanted to put in, and here they are. So this is the schedule for October 9th, and you can click over here on the calendar to see all the different games. From here, you can play it. You can auto-play it. 
up here, you can autoplay the day, you can autoplay the week, the month, you can even autoplay the entire season. Okay, and that goes pretty quick too, by the way. You can go to your standings. We'll check the standings. There's no games played. You can click on the teams. You can see who's on the teams. You can see the te the guys that are crossed out. They maybe didn't start the season with a team, or they're not on the team right now. So they, they did a good job of going in, actually, and finding out who was on the team at what point w with all the different seasons. So that's really kind of cool that they did that. Uh, over here on the right, you can change the team. And again, I put in my own logos here. So if we go to California, that's the SEALs logo I put in. <clears throat> so there are a few things you can customize, like logos in the whole bit. So we'll go back to the summary screen here. Now let, let's do, let's auto play the month. All right, I'm just going to auto play the month of October. And here we go. And we're done. <laughs> That's how fast it is. That's how fast it is. All right, so let's go to the standings. After a month, after the month of October. So here we are with the Flyers leading the Patrick Division. There's no, you know, you figured Buffalo, Montreal. So there it is. Now, here's where it gets kind of cool. So you can click on your teams, and you can break down to see what happened. Now, what this game does that's uh, different than the board game, and I'll try to explain some of the differences in the, in the two. You see how it's got penalty minutes over here with Len Frigg with 14 and Joey Johnson with 9. In fact, let me go with the Flyers. They probably have a boatload of penalty minutes. Yeah, okay, Clark, Schultz, Zaleski. What it does is it actually, when, the, when you're playing the game, whether you play the game or you sim the game, you're going to have your penalties in the game, but it's also going to tack on some penalties while you play. So when you're done the game, it's going to, I don't want to say artificial. <laughs> Was it 13-1 PJ? Let me check that again. Uh, it's, I, I don't want to say it artificially puts them in, but I guess it, it adds penalties to the game. So you're going to get more. So when you play a game of, uh, of this on the board game, you, know, you might get a couple of penalties in the game. Well, you're going to get more than that in the computer game. It's really going to try to simulate that. Uh, let me go to the highlight screen. Okay. Okay. So this is what's kind of neat. So you get best wins and worst defeats. You get hat tricks, and you got some memorable games over here. And what this is, it's voted by the fans – Again, it's kind of computer-generated. This is your fan highlight game. And then you get your comeback, and you get your lead changes. So this will tell you some of the biggest comebacks, and this is some of the lead changes. So Toronto-Vancouver had five lead, change, lead changes. So if I click on this, and we follow the uh, the box score over here, you can see Toronto-Vancouver, Toronto-Vancouver, Toronto. It just kept going back and forth. So that that was that one over here. Now let's check this one out over here. This is the 13-1 um, the to game. Ranges over... Washington. Uh, wow, look at this. Four, four, and five. 13 to one. Good catch on that, PJ. That's kind of cool that you caught that. So here's the box. Score. So on October 9th, which I think might have been opening night, the Rangers just destroyed the Capitals. It wasn't even funny. Um, Adams gets the loss, and uh, Jackman gets the win. And here's kind of what happened. So you, as you can see, um, there was only three penalties in this game. But the game actually will, um, like I say, th more penalties will be included in, in the final stats. So penalties happened in this game that you didn't see is kind of what I'm getting at. So let me click uh, click away from that. Um, we have hat tricks. So Esposito got a hat trick against the North Stars. So we can come over here. Esposito, Esposito, Esposito. Boston wins 5 nothing over Minnesota. And l let me talk about the box score for a second. This is one of the things that I was really a stickler about was the box score, okay? It, it was kind of all over the place, and it just didn't look like a hockey box score should be. So I, I fought, and, and Richard probably hates me, but I really pushed Richard to get this box score to look like a hockey box score. So now, in the top left, you get your teams and your, your score by period, your final score, you get your goaltenders, who started and who won. <clears throat> then by period, you got your goals. And then by period, you got your penalties. And that's that's the key. This left side is the key. And then over here in the middle, you got first. And then on the right, you got second. And then down below third. This is all what happened during the game. So the first roll was four minutes off the clock. It was um, uh, B with a 73 result. It was a slot goal for Boston. So it, you, if you were to play the board game and write down everything that happened, this is what this is what this is over here. This breaks down all the roles of the game. <clears throat> okay. So I fought really hard to get this box score. And this box score is a hundred percent 
hundred percent different from what it was. And I was really, I really was pushing this. And I and I don't want to toot my own horn, but but I wanted this to really look good. If we're gonna do a hockey game, let's do it good. And uh, as Scott joins us in here, yes, I did push really hard for the box score, and and I was nice about it. But I was like, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? And now the way it looks, it looks beautiful. It really does. Why isn't the player's season goal total in the box? Okay, that I don't know. But if you go to the summary, let's go to teams. And uh, so let's go to um, let's go to New York and see how they are. So, so again, you get your team, you get your points, your goals, your assists, your penalty minutes, your fights. Um, let me see. If you go to your summary here, now we have the overall leaders. So goal leader, Eric Vale of Atlanta Flames is the, um, the goals leader. If you click on points, you get your points leader. So Bobby Orr. Of course, is leading in points. Jean Rattel of New York is uh, tied with him after each playing. Um, no, it doesn't say how many games they played, but Ken Broderick of Boston's up here in the list. He's a, he's a he doesn't play that much goal, but but I like how then you can click on Atlanta, go right to Atlanta. You can go to their schedule. You can see the results. You can click on the results and go right to the box score. So this is kind of some of the things in um, in the main area that you can go to. You know, so again, you get your summary. This is kind of the overall, you know, standings and then leaders. You go to your schedule. And again, this is that opening night, October 9th right here. Whew. Yep, 1301. Good catch on that. And since we did simulate the month, you know, that's where we are. So if we wanted to simulate November, we could do that too. So we'll just go autoplay. Oh, no, no, no. We don't want to autoplay the season. Autoplay the month. So we'll autoplay the month. And you see how fast it played those games. And now we go back to the standings, and oh, now Atlanta has taken over the lead in the Patrick division over the uh, Flyers. So interesting. So, so that, so again, that's what you can do here. So, again, and then you get the report. Any game you click on, you get the report. Just click out of that. I really like that. So now we're going to start in December. So let me see. November thirtieth has been played because we played November. So December first would be the first set of games that we could play or auto play. Now from here, let's just say you wanted to play. Um, the Flyers and the Scouts. Okay, so let's auto-play this, auto-play this, auto-play this, auto-play this, and I want to play the Flyers and the Scouts. So let's get into some of the the gameplay here. Okay, that's what we're going to get into right now. And again, the logos are something that I added, and you can also change the sounds. Okay, and I put in the NHL 94 sounds from the Sega Genesis game. Ron played earlier on Twitch. He had the actual sounds I've changed the sounds. So th th that's one. this is one of my customizations. So when I play this game, when I click on play, and here's the screen, the sounds you're going to hear are not the ones that come with the game. I've customized mine, okay? So now let me take a, take you uh, walk you through the screen here. <clears throat> so as you can see, we have Kansas City on the left. <clears throat> they are the away team, and they are playing the Flyers. Now if you want to get out of this, and I, and I got screwed up on this when I first started playing this game. I was like, oh, oh what do I do? I don't want to play this. Just hit the save. Hit the save game, and now you're out. Okay, now you can come back here, and then you can say auto-finish the game. Excuse me, auto-finish the game. Or I want to resume it. So let's go back to resume. And I'm just checking in the chat room here. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> would it be fun to play the Summit Series in this? Yes, it is. Um, I may or may not have created some homebrew for that. <laughs> I'm not going to say. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, and, okay, I'm just reading Jeff uh, Scott. The original box score was a hot mess. Yeah, it, well, again, that's why, you know, they they brought myself and Ron in, and we took a look around, and Ron found a lot of the bugs, and I found a lot of the, the cosmetic things is, is kind of how it worked out. Um, yeah, we can check on that. Why isn't the season goal total in the box score? Yep. Um, yeah, that, that would be kind of neat to see that. It would be. Okay. So I don't have much time here because i got to go to work tonight. But let's get going here. So you can see on the left, Kansas City. This is the, the, um, the control, the attack, the defense, the aggression, power play, penalty kill, and goal. Plus A is a net. You can change it to Heron. So we'll go Heron because he's a 7. Okay. But that's pretty much the same thing you see on the team cards. And then down below, these are all the guys in the scoring range, the assist range, the penalty range. This is all the stuff that you see on the team card if you have the team card. Same with the Flyers over here. So we want Perrant. Do we want Bobby Taylor? Do we want Wayne Stevenson? Ah, uh, let's go Stevenson against the Scouts because, you know, it should be a nice, easy win. And, yes, you can roll your own dice. Uh, I'll get to that one second. Uh, at the top of the screen here, you can see that it says B to B. That means they're playing back-to-back -back games, back-to-back nights which 
there is an, uh, in the option here, there are some of the things here. You can have back-to-back -back game rule, which lowers some of the stamina. Okay, you can have home momentum. There's a few different options in here. Penalty, game, misconduct, penalty, minor, major. Okay, so I, I just have this selected here. I'm not going to do the back-to-back -back games. Um, and uh, regulation wins is tiebreak because that doesn't come into play. There's no overtime in 74, 75. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you can change some of the, <clears throat> the sounds. Oh, I think I had it. Oh, boy. Right about there. Uh, change the transparency of some things. I, I just played this till I till I had it right where I liked it. Uh, the the dice animation you can change here, and I like that. Oh, and they added this too. Display attacking team on the left. That's one thing I haven't uh, I haven't um, checked off yet. But there were some people talking about that. So there's some of the options in the game. Sorry about that. I'm still fighting off a cold. All right, so let's play. All right, so we changed our goalies just by clicking on them, and now let's start the game. Again, we go to our box score. There's nothing here yet. And we go back to the game. Again, if I want to leave, I hit the save and I leave the game. But I'm not going to I'm not gonna leave. So we got the options, the the report, and then the save game. So let's start this. We click on the puck to start. So now you got your timing die. Remember, that's the first thing you do. How much time comes off the clock? You got two choices. You can roll your own dice and then input the number. Or you can just click on it or you can hit return. So I'm going to just hit enter and boom. So now the game starts. So we have five minutes come off the clock, okay? Now, the battle number is 12. It automatically figures out the battle number and the control numbers for you, so you do not have to do that. The game figures that out for you. So our battle die number is 12. Control for Kansas City is only 1 to 6, and the Flyers has 7 to 20. So obviously, the Flyers are going to dominate this game. So now I'm just going to hit Enter, and we got a 13, so we're going to have a puck battle. Now you can see the puck battle chart automatically comes up, and it's showing you the first period results because we are in the first period. And if you were to look at the board game puck battle chart, you can see this first, second, third, and overtime. This game automatically pulls up the correct chart for you to look at, which is really kind of great. So again, you can roll your own dice, or you can hit the button, or you can mouse over it and click. So I'll mouse over and click. And we have 0-3s. We have an aggression check, minor penalty, and deal one hit. So you can see each team's stamina is at 10 right here next to the battle die. So that's all your pertinent information. So let's roll the dice. And it looks like it's going to be uh, Philadelphia plus 3 on the aggression. So we got a 3 for Kansas City and the Flyers with a 19. So the Flyers deliver the hit. Kansas City's stamina goes to 9 and... Philadelphia deals a hit, but they also get a penalty. So right now, Kansas City goes on the power play. So we click on the puck to advance. And so now we have the Kansas City power play. Now, one thing you notice right here underneath the, the logo, Simon Nole, or Simon Nole, he is going to get the scoring chance if there is a scoring chance. And that's one thing that uh, Ron actually brought up when we were playing the board game was it'd be nice to know who the shooter was before we take the shot so we can visualize what happens. And they did that. We, we pushed for this, and they did that. The only thing that's different, though, is you don't roll for it. You don't roll for the goal scorer. You don't roll for the assist. You don't roll for penalties, and you don't roll for fights, okay, like you do in the board game. The game handles all of that automatically. We were talking about could that be added. We're not sure if that can be changed or not. But in any case, um, so Simone Nole, if there's a scoring chance, he will be the one to take the shot for Kansas City, okay? So that's one thing that has kind of um, been, been added to the game here. All right, so, again, on the power play, there's no timing roll. It's just, you know, one minute off the clock, and we roll for the power play. So we're going to roll, and we have a 28. So Kansas City, now you can see what they're reading off of here. They're reading off of the power play three and four. If I look at my board game chart under power plays, okay, because Philadelphia's penalty kill is an eight, and the power play for Kansas City is a five, it's going to be plus three for the penalty kill team. So if you were looking at your board game chart, you would go to the penalty kill advantage plus three plus four. So that's what this indicates over here on the left, is that we are reading off of PK plus three plus four column, which is usually better for the penalty kill team. Okay, that's how that is. So we got a crease chance for Simone Nole, and he's shooting on Wayne Stevenson. Now, if we come over here, it, on the right-hand side, it brings up our crease chance. So, again, Kansas City, Simone Nolay is taking the shot. The goaltender is a 7. So, for Nolay to score, 
He's got a 0 to 58 because goalie of 8 or better will save up to 58. I mean, will not save. So the, uh, I said that wrong. On a goalie 7, a 59 or better, he makes the save. Anything less than 59 is a goal. So lower is better for scoring. So 0 to 58 is a goal for no lay on the power play. 0 to 58 and a 61, no. Ooh, just missed it. So that's going to be a big save by Wayne Stevenson. And now we play on. We click on the puck. And again, you can see that it shows the time right here. We're in the 14th minute, and it's 5 on 4. So when I click, it should go to 13, 5 on 4. And you can see how the numbers kind of scroll down here. And there's also a time up here. You can see Kansas City's record is 4, 13, and 5. And it shows their real record on the left, which is really nice. That's another thing that um, we were, you know, we had talked about with Richard about is let's clarify what is what because I think there was a just a real record. You didn't have the actual record in your game. So Philadelphia right now is 15, 6, and 2. Their overall record in real life is 51, 18, and 11. I like that he put both on there. I, re I really do. So that, that was key, too. There's a lot of things that have been changed since we started uh, working with this game, but I think it is fantastic. It really is. All right, so um, so the save was made, so we go to the second part of the power play. And um, so another crease chance, and this time it's Ted Snell. Ted Snell, and again, with a 7, he's got a 0 to 58. And this time he scores. And I don't know if the sound came through or not. Do I have the sound? Let me know if you hear the sound. Do I have the sound on here? I do have game sounds. So you might be hearing game sounds. I, I, I can't hear them on my headset, just kind of how I have it set up. But I have the NHL 94 sound. So when the visitors score, you should get a boo. And when the home team scores, you should get a cheer. Okay? But again, there is sound in this game. I've manipulated it. I'm not sure if I'm hearing. If you're hearing sounds, let me know. If you're not hearing sounds, let me know. But anyway, so we get the goal. And you can see that the assists are already doled out. So Snell from Gilbert and Johnson, so you don't roll for the assists or the goals in this game. The computer does that all. All right, so now we're done here, and now we go back. It's one nothing Kansas City, and now let's roll the dice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate, okay, so you can hear the sound. It's, again, it's the NHL 94 sound is what I have on here. So if you've played Sega Hockey, you'll recognize these. But you can go in and change the sounds to whatever you want. You can even leave the, um, the regular sounds. The regular sounds are very modern, and I tend to play older games. So sound runs loud. Okay, thank you. I will, uh, I will change that. All right, so let's go to the timing die. And we have it's uh, one off the clock. It's, the battle is going to be 10, so it's going to be a control battle. And the control is going to go to Kansas City on a 1 to 5. So the Philadelphia defense is at 10. And so we roll a 12. So we're going to go to attack chart A. And here's what's really neat about this right here. And I'll lower the sound in one second. On, a ch on attack chart A, you can see how it, we have A, B, and C on this chart here. So what's going to happen is if you were looking at the actual charts in the board game, okay? Okay, my sound was fine. Okay, I, I thought I had it turned down. So if you were to look at the chart, I'm looking at the chart. My camera's off tonight because I'd be in the way. Um, but I'm looking at the chart here in the board game, and if I get on to 16 to 21, okay, it says attack four scores. Well, they're not an attack four. They're an attack three. So this chart that comes up automatically bumps you to the proper column. So because they are not attack four, attack two or three would be a crease chance on a 16. That's kind of what I'm just looking at here. So you can see that's a B. If I get on to 27 to 30, 27 to 30, are they attack six? No. Are they attack four or five? No. So I got to go to column C. So what this does is it automatically filters out the chart for you. So no matter what you roll, it's going to appear here. So again, you start with chart A. If it, if it doesn't connect, in other words, if the attack isn't strong enough, then you go to chart B. If B is still not there, then you go to chart C. So this does all the heavy lifting for you by showing what's going to happen. So let me just click on my action die, and I get a 17. So, again, if they were a better team on a 17, if they were attack four or better, that's a goal. But because there are three, I go to column B, and column three is a crease chance. So just like the board game, so it's a crease chance. And again, it's already selected Ed Gilbert. The, 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 the game rolled, Ed Gilbert. Ed Gilbert's going to take a shot 
on Wayne Stevenson, who's a goalie seven, and we already determined that on a crease chance, zero to 58 is a goal. And holy cow, it's two nothing scouts. And you should have heard the booing sound <laughs> from, from NHL 94, if you can hear that at all. So the scouts, holy cow, they go up two to nothing here in Philadelphia. All righty. So I'm just going to hit the timing die. Battle died. I'll show you how fast this plays. A defensive one. So it's going to be another chance for Kansas City. This time off of chart D. And a 38 is no action at all. So now what I can do, I can just save this. If I want to leave the game. And you can see that right now it's not finished. So I can go back and resume the game if I want. So I do like that as well. And I can also auto finish the game if I want to do it from the outside. Um, let me see. Oh, let me show you, show you a couple other things here. All right. So let me go here. So let us go six off the clock, and we're going to do a control battle. So let me just put in one to make sure I got a control battle. And let me see. Control will be seven for the Flyers. And I checked the defense, which is a three, so we'll, sit, we'll give them a seven. So it's going to be a chart A and 46. It's going to be a crease chance. Now the goalie over here is the same as a seven. So zero to 58 is a goal. And nope, that's going to be a save by Dennis Heron. And there is that. So we come back over here. Now let me do a puck battle. So let me do a puck battle. And we'll do an aggression check of 02. So now you can see the first aggression is blue. The dice is blue. You see how next to Kansas City, the A, the away team, is blue. So the die will, will um they match up. So they got the blue for Kansas City with the blue aggression die. Okay. So now Philadelphia is red. Red goes with the home team. So that's what you get there. For now, right now, I think there's seven seasons. I'll go back to the main screen in one second. And so now the Flyers roll three. So Kansas City delivers a hit. They get the minor penalty. And you might have heard the cheering there. And so now it's going to be um, Philadelphia on the power play. 57 is a big save. No shot. 21. And that's a goal, and that's the end of the period. So I think I did hear that. So the Flyers get on the board late on the last roll of the first period, and it is now 2-1. to one. Let's go to my um, summary here. And you can see that Snell scored on the power play. It's one to nothing. Gilbert scored from McElmory and Crashley to make it 2 nothing. And then at the end of the period, and I like how they, they kind of rolled and get some seconds in here as well. So it's in the last minute of play, but they do give some seconds, by the way. Uh, they don't do that on the, the penalties, but they do it on the goals, which is kind of neat. So Powell play goal by Seleski, and uh, it's 2-1 to one at the end of one. Here's everything that happened in that period. So everything we rolled is right here. So we rolled five minutes off the clock. We had that minor hit, a uh, minor penalty in Philadelphia, and then we had the crease save and then the crease goal, and then another crease goal by Kansas City. We had no shot. Excuse me, we had a crease save, and then it goes right down the list till we had the goal by the Flyers on the power play here. So, so I'm going to just save this, and let's auto-finish the game. And it was uh, – Flyers came back to win it 4-3. to three. So that's good. The Flyers should have won that game, and they did. So they were trailing 2-1 to one after 1, but they came back, and they really took it to them, and that's what we got for a final score. So let's go back to my standings here, and that's what we have. And, again, you can click on any team and go right to their page. You can click on their stats – Click on their schedule. So if we go to Washington, <laughs> we'll see how Washington's been doing. After that 13-1 loss, oh, they actually beat Minnesota. Washington's actually 4-18 and here in December. That ain't too bad. So it gets to show you that, oh, Boston beat them 10 nothing. Very nice, Boston. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so that is that. Uh, Jason, uh, this one is great. Yeah, this one is um, This one's just like the... Uh, the board game. So let's go to the highlights. We'll take a look at the best wins for each team. So Atlanta beat Kansas City 10 to nothing. Boston beat Washington 10 to nothing. California, holy cow, 9 to 2. The Seals beating the Red Wings 9 to 2 on November 1st of 1974. That was their best best win. That is pretty cool. And I'm a huge stat guy, so I really like the ability to click and check box scores and that's why I really really push to get this box score looking like a really good hockey box score. I really did. So then we got the worst defeats going on so far this season. 
And then we have hat tricks going on. Jim Pappen of Chicago had a hat trick. Uh, Rene Robert, you probably heard of. We have some memorable games. So we have lead changes and comebacks. So, again, uh, the comeback wins, you know, so this St. Louis must have trailed by two. And then they came back to win it. So they trailed by two at some point. Yeah, they trailed uh, two nothing, and they came back and they won the game. And then we have um, our lead changes. So there were five lead changes in that game. Again, I think you can sort by that. Yeah. What was the biggest comeback? Just a two-goal comeback so far this season. This was something that was just added. Highlights was just added at the end here, and that was something that Richard came up with. And that was, I didn't know what that was, but I'm really enjoying uh, the highlight portion, especially with the fact that you can click on, you know, Bob Yor here and see his his last hat trick here. You know, or, or, oh, he got four goals in this game. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> you know, so. All right, so let me click out of 74. And this is where we are. We're back to the main screen here. And, again, uh, if you missed the beginning, you can create a new season. Any season that you own, you can drop teams into and play. And you can set it all up here, however you like. When you create your season there. Uh, your playoffs. So let's just say, hey, I want to take the 74 Flyers. And I'm going to have them play the 90 Pittsburgh Penguins. And we're going to have our uh, fictional cup. And we're going to create the playoffs. Seven games. And here we go. So here's our playoffs here. It's 91 Pittsburgh going up against 75 Philadelphia. Let's auto play the round. And it goes seven games. And the Flyers win it four games to three. So that is kind of how you would do that. Again, you want to click on the report. See the report here? So it was a, a goal in the third period by McLeish that wins the series for the Flyers. And that's kind of how that works. Um, we did have an overtime game here. And you can see that we get first, second, third, and then overtime bottom bottom right over here to show you what happens. So, yeah, there's a lot of really neat things there. Hockey fan stops by. Yeah, Richard does some great work. Yeah, it really does. Um, and Jeff stops by. Yep. Yep, and uh, so that is that. So, if you have any questions here, let me go back to uh, let me go back to Studio uh, B here real quick. So, that's a quick look at a little bit of gameplay, a little bit what you get with it. Um, it, it is so fast. I mean, you can sit there and just kind of enter, hit enter, and get through a game if you want to. I don't know why you would, but you could. Uh, the autoplay function is unbelievable. It plays games really fast. You can simulate an entire season in. 15, 20 seconds if you really want to. So, But the idea that you can create your own playoffs, create your own season, there's a lot of customization in there. I have my own sounds that I added. I have my own logos. Uh, Ron on his Twitch channel was doing the uh, the actual logos, I mean the actual sounds that came with the game, I think um, he was using there. And so um, uh, right now, fictional teams right now know on the PC game. They do come with the board game. And you can create your own teams in the board game, and it shows you how. Right now, it, it that you what I showed you is what you get. You get the regular seasons. So, um, and yes, the stats are very fast. So right now, there's no fictional in the game. Uh, Gary has been talking to Richard about that, but I think that right now they wanted to get the game out in time for Halloween with the seasons. There is definitely talk though because the fictional was so popular with the board game. Okay, that was one thing that. I was surprised. In fact, Ron and myself had talked offline about this, about Ron. I don't know what it is about this game, but the fictional aspect of this game is like no other game that I have, is that when I was playing the fictional teams, I was really enjoying myself. Again, on, on the tabletop I'm talking about here. And I said, I can see myself playing some fictional here if that was in the PC game. So they're still talking about it. Again, this game is not done done. I, I don't even doubt that after it's released that they don't add something to it because... I think this is a really fun game. I think it's really simple to play. It, it, it plays pretty much like the board game. Again, the difference is being you don't roll for the shooter and you don't roll for the assists and you don't roll for penalties. But everything else, you can roll your own dice. You can input, you know, uh, you know whatever the timing die is, whatever the battle die is, whatever the control, you know, whatever you're rolling for there. It's all in there. You roll for the shot. So, I mean, I was doing that myself, and it's really fun to roll the dice and, and input it there. So that is uh, an option. Um, but there are some things that are non-optional, again, as far as identifying the shooter, identifying the assist. Uh, what I do like, though, is the game does generate penalties. It really does. I do like that. In fact, let me go back to the game for one second here. And um, 
show you a couple of things. So let me get out of here. Let me go back to my 74, 75 season. And I like if I go to, oh, where is it over here? Um, they did add a few more things. So I'll go to Montreal. Oh, I'll go to our stats. Yeah, there's a few things they changed. Um, we did get the win percentage added, I think, in, in goals. There's a few things that we did get added here um, that weren't in the original version of the game. And a lot of it was goaltenders. That's what it was. Yeah, there was no goaltender stats to start with, and now we have a lot of goaltender stats. And again, they don't do shots on net, so we, we really can't get a goals against average or a save percentage or anything like that because we don't keep track of how many minutes the goalies play, I don't think. So it really just if they start the game and they win the game, they'll get the win, and uh, we'll keep track of how many goals they let up, things like that. But um, uh, again, there's things that this game does not do and there's things that this game does and they make no bones about what it does and what it doesn't do and what it does it does very very well i will say that uh it does some things surprisingly well in fact that i really like um here's the standings again it, it gives you all that what you need you get your you know your win loss your points your goals against your goals for your home and road record i mean it gives you everything you can really ask for in a game like this and 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 what was weird as i come back again um is he originally designed this game just to be kind of a quicker play game. It was a fill-in game. And after we played it, we said, this is not a fill-in game. This is a, this is almost a full full play game here. You you get a good chunk of highlights in this game. So don't don't um don't don't sell yourself short in this game. This is not something that, that you just fill in with. This is something you can play. There's a lot of meat on this bone. There really is. Um let me see. Um I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's a fictional mo if they would upcharge for that or not. Uh, Gandalf, um, it, they they are talking about it. They are talking about fictional be because I think that the board game fictional went over so well and everybody wanted to do it. Uh, but that would be adding so much to the game to try to be able to you know create stuff in the game rather than play it. So I'm not sure. Uh, the game. I'm not sure what the game is going to come with yet on the PC, and it's due out um, on Halloween. So I think it's in two weeks. It's due out. That's what it is. Um, th this is a serious hockey game, Jason. No doubt. This is this is not uh, just a little quick play game that you just play off on the side. This this is the real deal. There's there's a lot of action in this game. This is really fun, and and I don't know if I like the PC game or the board game better because they they both play pretty identical. They they really do, and it's and it's really really fun. Um, uh, the fictional stuff on PC will not aid in the real life team creation process, says Scott. Okay. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so you get the uh, the seven possible seasons. I'm not sure which one's going to come with the game. Uh, he had talked about trying to get the fictional teams in the release on the PC, so the teams that you get, you know, the Dayton Bombers and, and Saskatchewan and all those teams that you get with the board game, he was trying to get those in here, which would be kind of neat. That would be kind of neat if you could do that. Um, but there's still talk about whether that's going to happen or not. But well, like I say, in the, the version we've been playing and, and – um, trying out and, and, you know, going over and debugging and suggesting things. Uh, we get the, the seven seasons that, that came in the game that we've been playing with. And, boy, I tell you, really, um, <laughs> a lot of emails went back and forth. I really pushed for some things really hard in this game, and I'm really happy that 90% of what I suggested is in the game, and I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm just saying that that's how receptive they were to make this game really good and so uh ron found a lot of things in there that i didn't find i suggested some things uh some of the other guys on the list suggested some things as well and uh i know richard begrudgingly put some things in at, at my request i know he probably was <laughs> just like okay if he didn't put that in but when he did put it in it made such a huge difference it really did i mean ev everything now looks fantastic we got the green light to show it off and i'm glad we did because it, it it's fantastic the way it is now even compared to a couple weeks ago it's night and day where this game is right now uh between just you know, how it looks the, the 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 schedules the reports the um just the standings the stat everything now Looks really, really good, and I think they're really close to release. So they're hoping for two weeks. Halloween night hat trick, hat trick or treat? Yep, it could be. Um, yep, yeah. So uh, we we pushed pushed them hard. Scott was pushing hard. There's a lot, a lot of people that were were pushing for some things, and I think uh, I think what we have here is very good. 
And uh, so hats off to everybody that worked in this game. Hats off to Richard and Gary who, who uh, listened to us. And, uh, and I had to <laughs> – I actually apologize to Gary. He says, I know I'm pushing Richard really hard. I'm hitting him with a lot of things. I have a laundry list here of stuff that I think needs to be in this game. And he just said, keep sending it to him. And it was. So anyway, so that is a quick look at Stone Cold Hockey PC. I hope you like it. Um, I'm sure we'll be playing more as the, the week goes on now that we were given the green light to show it off a little bit. Um, but I wanted to show a little bit what it looks like, what you're getting into, a little bit of gameplay, how it plays. So hopefully you saw some of that there. There's a little bit of customization with logos and sounds and things like that, uh, creating your own season, creating your own playoffs. So it, it, it's flexible in a lot of, lot of ways that I wasn't expecting, and it's really nice to see that there. So anyway, so hey, I'm Dave. I'm off to the rink, and I will talk to everybody. Hey, thanks for, for tuning in. Let me know what you think of this. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, but I think we got a hit on our hands. I really do. And, and, and I can't wait to stop playing this uh, for real now. I really can't. So And now that I'm, I'm happy that we can actually talk about it now, too, because it's something we, uh, we've been, like, biting our lip on the show. What have you been playing? Mm, I don't want to say, you know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is great. Um, and uh, so thanks, everybody, that tuned in tonight. And uh, we will talk to you soon. And who knows? Maybe I'll come on tonight and play play after the rink tonight. I can see how tired I am when I get home. But maybe I'll sneak in a full game tonight when I get home, and just we can that way we can we can play a full game. So we'll talk.